Have you ever gazed up at the stars and wondered about our place in the universe? Picture this. The universe, an expansive canvas stretching out in all directions, spotted with countless celestial bodies. Stars, galaxies, nebulae and clusters, all painted with the artistic brush of time and space. It's vast, isn't it? Almost incomprehensibly so. But here's something even more mind-boggling. We are part of that cosmic canvas. Yes, you, me, the trees outside your window, the birds in the sky, even your morning coffee. We are all made of stardust. Isn't that a thrilling thought? Every single atom in our bodies, from the calcium in our bones to the iron in our blood, was once part of a star. And not just any star, but a star that exploded in a supernova, spewing its enriched guts across the cosmos. Our hearts pump with the rhythm of starlight. Our minds, these intricate labyrinths of thought and emotion, are powered by the remnants of celestial bodies. We are not just inhabitants of the universe, we are the universe expressing itself in human form. Consider this. The universe is around 13.8 billion years old. It's seen the birth and death of countless stars, the formation of galaxies, the unfolding of life in all its bizarre and beautiful forms. And in all that time it's created us, beings capable of looking up at the stars and recognizing our cosmic heritage. It's easy to feel small and insignificant when we contemplate the vastness of the cosmos. But remember, we are the children of stars. We carry their fiery passion, their radiant energy, their timeless wisdom within us. We are not just tiny specks in the universe, we are the universe. Our very existence is a testament to the beauty and mystery that is the cosmos. We are the universe's way of understanding itself. And that, my friends, is a reason to stand tall, to step forward with courage and curiosity. As we look up to the stars, we're not just observers, but participants in this cosmic journey. Let me take you back to 1969, a year that forever altered our relationship with the universe. This is the story of the first man on the moon, Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong, a name we've all heard, a man who has etched his name in the annals of history. But how did this chap from a small town in Ohio end up taking a pleasant stroll on the moon? Let's rewind the reel a bit, shall we? Neil was born in 1930, and as a young lad, he had a fascination with flight. At just six, he took his first airplane ride and was absolutely smitten. His love for aviation only grew from there, like a bonfire stoked by a relentless wind. By 16, he had his pilot's license. Before he could even legally drive a car, he was soaring through the clouds. Talk about setting your priorities straight. He went on to study aeronautical engineering at Purdue University on a Navy scholarship, but just as he was settling into the life of a scholar, Uncle Sam came calling. Neil was called to serve in the Korean War as a naval aviator. He flew 78 combat missions, showing bravery that would later serve him well on his lunar mission. After the war, he returned to his studies and then became a test pilot. For those of you not in the know, test pilots are the daredevils of the aviation world. They climb into unproven aircraft and push them to their limits, all in the name of progress. Neil was one of these thrill-seekers, piloting the X-15 rocket plane that reached the edge of space. In 1962, he joined NASA's astronaut program. It was a rigorous and competitive process, but Neil was no stranger to challenges. He trained in simulated environments, experienced the disorientation of zero gravity, and learned to handle high-pressure situations. All this while maintaining a cool head and a sense of humor. Once, when asked by a reporter what he would do if he couldn't get back from the moon, he quipped, well, I'd have a pretty interesting story to tell, wouldn't I? Finally came the Apollo 11 mission in 1969, the culmination of years of preparation. It was a journey fraught with danger and uncertainty. But Neil, being Neil, handled it with grace and aplomb. He navigated glitches and alarms, guiding the lunar module to a safe landing spot on the moon's surface. And there he was, standing on a celestial body that no human had ever touched, gazing back at the Earth hanging in the black void of space. In that moment, he wasn't just Neil Armstrong, the boy from Ohio who loved to fly. He was a symbol of human achievement, a testament to our limitless potential. 
And so Armstrong stepped onto the moon, not just as an American, but as a representative of all mankind, and uttered the famous words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong's journey wasn't just about reaching the moon. It was a testament to human will, determination, and the courage to dream big. Let's delve deeper into the lessons that this remarkable journey has to offer. First off, the power of perseverance. Armstrong's journey to the moon wasn't a straight path. It was riddled with obstacles, setbacks and failures. The Apollo mission itself was a culmination of years of tireless work, numerous trials and errors, and countless disappointments. But did they give up? No, Armstrong and his team kept pushing, kept trying and kept believing, and eventually they succeeded. The lesson? Setbacks are not roadblocks, they're just detours on the path to success. Next, the importance of teamwork. Armstrong may have been the one to physically step onto the lunar surface, but he didn't get there alone. Behind him was an entire team of scientists, engineers and astronauts, all working together towards a common goal. It was a collective effort, a testament to what we can achieve when we work together. So remember, no man is an island. We achieve our greatest successes not in isolation, but in collaboration. Finally, the courage to overcome fear. The journey to the moon was one fraught with danger and uncertainty. There were a million things that could have gone wrong, but Armstrong and his team faced their fears, took the risk and ventured into the unknown. It's a powerful reminder that often our greatest achievements lie just beyond our fears. The moon landing was not just an event, it was a lesson. A lesson in perseverance, in teamwork, in courage. It serves as a beacon, illuminating the path for all those who dare to dream who dare to strive, and who dare to achieve. Just like Armstrong, we too can overcome our challenges and reach for our own moons, whatever they may be. As we stand on the shoulders of giants like Armstrong, what does the future of space exploration hold for us? Imagine a future where we're no longer confined to this blue marble we call Earth, but are citizens of the cosmos, venturing forth into the vast expanse of space, setting foot on Mars, on Europa, and even beyond our solar system. Mars, the red planet, is the next big milestone in our cosmic journey. Scientists and engineers are already working on the technology and strategies that will one day allow us to live there. It's not just about planting a flag and coming back, but establishing a human presence, a second home for humanity. But it doesn't stop there. The moons of Jupiter and Saturn like Europa and Titan beckon with their icy surfaces and potential for life. Our technology is advancing at such a pace that these distant celestial bodies are becoming more attainable with each passing day. And then there's the tantalizing prospect of venturing beyond our solar system. The nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, is over four light years away. That's 25 trillion miles. But who's to say that in 100 years or 200, we won't have found a way to traverse such distances? These missions, these journeys into the unknown, inspire us to push our boundaries, to strive for greater achievements. They remind us that there's always something more to learn, something more to discover. They challenge us to be better, to do better. They spark our curiosity and fuel our ambition. The future of space exploration is not just about getting to these places, it's about what we can learn, how we can grow, and who we can become in the process. It's about realizing that we're part of something much larger than ourselves. It's about stepping out into the cosmos and saying, we are here, we are explorers, we are humans. The stars are not just distant points of light, they're our next destination. As we look to the stars, we're not just dreaming, we're planning our next great adventure. The beauty of our universe is that it reminds us of our own cosmic connection. We are stardust a living testament to the grandeur of the cosmos. We've journeyed through the life of Neil Armstrong, a man who dared to step into the unknown, to place the first human footprint on the lunar surface. His story is a testament to the power of human will and determination. We've learned the lessons from the moon landing, the importance of bravery, teamwork, and the quest for knowledge. These lessons are not just about space exploration, but about life itself. We've also peeked into the future of space exploration, 
It's a future filled with possibilities where we'll continue to push boundaries, discover new worlds and continue our cosmic journey. Remember, we are all stardust, born from the cosmos and destined to explore it. So dare to dream, dare to explore and dare to make your own giant leap. Ooh.